Hello there! My name is Nate, and welcome back to the breathtaking island of Sikihor here in the Philippines. This is a remarkable destination filled with exciting activities and natural treasures, and I've had the privilege to live here now for over a year. I recently completed a comprehensive travel documentary about this tropical wonder in the Pacific, and if you haven't already seen it, you can click here or the first link down in the description below. In that video, I'll take you on a one-of-a-kind guided tour all around the island and provide detailed information for most of Sikihor's top attractions. It's a great precursor to this video. Today, I'll give you my top 10 tips for visiting Sikihor. These are the things not commonly discussed in Sikihor vlogs or travel guides. It's the information I wish I had known from my very first visit. The advice I'll be sharing is from my personal experiences, observations, and interactions with others on the island. Stay tuned because I'll give some useful bonus tips near the very end. All right, let's jump right in and look at how to make any trip to Sikihor that much better. Come on. Tip number one, unless you wanna take a private or chartered flight to Sikihor's single community airport, the only way onto and off of the island is by ferry boat. A number of ferry companies offer multiple trips daily to and from Sikihor Island. Ferry schedules tend to change on a regular basis, so I'd encourage you to check the most up-to-date schedule information, which can normally be found on each ferry company's Facebook page or website. Also, regardless of the port you're departing from in the Philippines, plan to arrive early so you can purchase your tickets before the cutoff time pay the port fee, and find your departure gate. While you might be able to get a ticket 30 minutes before departure, I'd recommend getting in line at the ticket counter at least an hour before departure, especially on busy travel days like holidays and weekends. Ferries can fill up quickly, and if you want to ensure that you'll get on board and have a chance at getting a decent seat, then arriving early is key. Tip number two. As I just mentioned, ferry schedules determine the access you'll have to the island, as well as your ability to leave the island. Therefore, I strongly recommend planning buffer days before and after your scheduled visit to Sikihor. This means incorporating some flexibility in your travel plans in case weather, maintenance issues, or crowds cause ferry delays. There are times that Sikihor Island becomes inaccessible due to high winds and rough seas, and ferry companies can cancel multiple ferry trips for several days until weather conditions improve. So if you're planning to leave the country or take a flight to another island after your visit to Sikihor, it's probably best not to take a ferry off the island on the same day that you're planning to fly out. As an additional note, you can get some great weather forecasts and detailed maps of wind and wave conditions on windy.com. It's my go-to weather website, and it offers incredibly handy storm tracking information and satellite imagery. Tip number three. If you're a foreigner visiting the Philippines, it's best to have at least some Philippine currency with you before you arrive on the island. Not many businesses on Sikihor accept credit or debit cards for payment, and only a handful of places might be able to exchange your home currency for Philippine pesos. A select number of ATMs are available in more populated areas, but every so often, they stop working due to maintenance issues or a lack of funds. Also, ATMs here charge significant withdrawal fees when using a foreign debit card. Oh, and here's a tip within a tip for foreign visitors. When using ATMs or paying by credit card using a card reading device anywhere in the country, do not accept the offer to complete the transaction in your home currency. This service is called Dynamic Currency Conversion, and in my opinion, it's a complete ripoff. Almost always, there are annoying exchange rate markups when accepting this feature, so avoid it. I think it's best to always reject the offered conversion and thus accept payment in Philippine pesos. Your credit card network, like Visa or MasterCard, will do the conversion for you at a much better rate. Furthermore, I'd encourage you to do your own research and consult your bank's list of fees before making any financial decisions while traveling. Tip number four. Sikihor's most popular municipality is San Juan, which is on the western side of the island. It is indeed beautiful and offers many terrific sights and activities. 
Tourists tend to stay in this region of the island for most of their visit, and they usually take just a few key routes to access Sikihor's top attractions. Sikihor's primary circumferential road goes around the entire island. It's well-maintained and offers terrific access to multitudes of roads that go into the island's interior. That being said, I encourage any and all visitors to take several days to branch out and explore the paths less traveled. I can tell you from experience that Sikihor has dozens of awe-inspiring routes that offer postcard-perfect views, immersive jungle experiences, and a whole collection of hidden natural wonders. To get you started, some of my favorite routes include this one from Bulacau Forest Reservation to Tacloban, this route from Sikihor to Mount Bandalaan National Park, this route from Lorena to Salagdaong Forest, this one from Kenlobo to Talingting, and this route from Banban to Kanbagag Falls. Again, there are many others worth checking out, so devote time to wandering around away from the most popular parts of Sikihor. Tip number five. As a follow-up to the last tip, be extremely cautious when traveling around Sikihor by motorbike or car. To be more specific, watch out for dogs, cats, chickens, potholes, and sudden construction zones with little advance warning. I can't tell you how many times I've seen animals, mainly dogs, cross in front of me while riding around the island. Friendly dogs are plentiful throughout Sikihor, and many times they cross quiet and busy roads alike at their leisure. It's as if they know they always have the right of way. Some pets even sleep on the road without a care in the world. Be mindful of this and other potential obstructions. Not all roads are paved, and the routes I provided earlier will likely take you through construction zones and sections of unpaved roads that may not accommodate anything larger than a motorbike. Additionally, roads can be quite slick, especially if they are damp, mossy, or covered by leaves. In short, attentive defensive driving is vital. Wear a helmet, avoid speeding, especially around corners, have downloaded maps available on your phone, and enjoy safe and fun rides around Sikihor Island. Tip number six. A number of municipalities on Sikihor have fairly frequent power outages, and I'd say this has been an accepted part of island life here for decades. While some restaurants and resorts have backup generators, there are others that do not. Blackouts can last for half an hour or half a day, with most blackouts lasting for no more than two hours at a time. Inconsistent power supply will become very noticeable for anyone who decides to live here for months at a time. If you want to ensure a steady power supply during your visit, be sure to contact your guest house or resort to see if backup power will be available. As for the internet, connection speeds on the island have dramatically improved in recent years, and most accommodations, restaurants, and cafes offer decent Wi-Fi. Video calls, HD streaming, and uploading content to social media can be difficult, however, if multiple people are utilizing the same network. If you want reliable access to the internet in populated areas, consider buying a Philippine SIM card and data plan before you arrive in Sikihor. Tip number seven. Sikihor's picturesque waterfalls are some of the most popular natural attractions on the island. This means you will likely encounter crowds of tourists around the island's top waterfalls, like Kambogaihe, Lugnasan, and Kawasan. If you want to avoid masses of people while visiting these and other well-known natural sites on Sikihor, schedule your nature sightseeing trips on weekdays. Try to avoid weekends and holidays if possible. Also, plan to arrive early in the morning or late in the afternoon. Check opening and closing times online so that you can be the first one in or the last one out. This will likely provide the best opportunity to take photos and soak in the beauty of each site with the fewest number of visitors around you. Aside from this benefit, early morning and late afternoon visits will also help you avoid midday heat and the potential for serious sunburns. This is especially true for water activities along Sikihor's beaches, including swimming, snorkeling, paddleboarding, and kayaking. If you're planning to be outdoors any time between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m., I'd highly recommend applying SPF 30 sunblock at the minimum. Tip number eight, 
The Philippine Islands know how to celebrate, and Sikihor is no exception. From the largest municipality to the smallest barangay, there are fiestas across the entire island throughout the year. Here in the Philippines, a fiesta is a local festival where everyone is invited to come out for food, music, games, and other public events. When planning your trip to Sikihor, take a look at the dates of major fiestas across the island. I'll include a link to a full list of Sikihor fiestas down below. These celebrations are great opportunities to try classic Filipino dishes, participate in traditional festivities, and meet the extremely friendly locals of the island. Filipinos in general are incredibly kind and hospitable. And if you get to know some of Sikihor's residents, you may get an opportunity to attend a celebratory feast in someone's home. When that happens, just be ready to eat well and, of course, sing karaoke. It's an absolute blast, and after living in the Philippines for over four years, I'll tell you, I love fiestas. Another well-known celebration that you shouldn't miss is Sikihor's Healing Festival, which takes place near the top of Mount Bandalaan during the Holy Week every year. It offers intriguing experiences and insights into the world of traditional faith healing, as well as musical performances by local artists and a wide array of Sikihor souvenirs. You can find out more about the Healing Festival in my full-length Sikihor documentary. Tip number nine. Every time you visit a natural attraction on the island, be ready to pay one or several fees, which may include environmental fees, entrance fees, equipment rental fees, and mandatory guide fees or donations. There are exceptions where you can trek around beaches, forests, or rolling green hills at no additional cost, but most of the popular waterfalls, caves, cliff diving sites, and marine sanctuaries charge their own fees. Some sites are managed by the government, while others are managed by private landowners or local communities. Entrance and environmental fees tend to be quite reasonable. At present, you'll likely pay a minimum of 20 pesos, such as the fee for accessing a waterfall or beach, or 100 pesos, such as the fee for snorkeling in a marine sanctuary. Of course, these fees are subject to change at any time. Tip number 10. Sikihor has absolutely phenomenal cafes and restaurants, and while I could recommend dozens of local and international cuisine, I would like to highlight the simple yet wonderful Filipino carinderias on the island. These are local food stalls and small eating establishments that are usually family owned and tremendously affordable, especially compared to the larger and more popular restaurants that cater primarily to tourists. Carinderi is often display available dishes in a cafeteria-style layout, and they tend to serve a variety of mouth-watering Filipino favorites, including pancit, caldereta, lumpia, ulalo, mung bean soup, pork menudo, fried or grilled chicken, and my personal favorite, adobo. If you would like to learn more about traditional Filipino dishes, please check out my full Food of the Philippines video here or you can click on the second link in the description below. In San Juan, my two favorite carinderias are Rico Suave Bulalo House and Tucaran Foodstuff. I go back time and again for delicious home-cooked meals, and I'll repeat that the prices at these carinderias will be very hard to beat anywhere else. So good. Well, that wraps up our top 10 tips for a visit to Sikihor. As promised, for those of you still tuned in, I've got three quick bonus tips. Bonus tip number one, Sikihor has terrific nightlife, mostly in San Juan. A number of restaurants and bars feature DJs and live music performed by incredibly talented musicians. If you're looking for the liveliest nighttime destinations with tons of great music, dancing, and an island party atmosphere, check out JJ's Backpacker Village, Runic Sikihor, Sunny Lynn Bar, and Salamandas Restaurant at Coco Grove Beach Resort. Be sure to check the schedules online as most of these businesses have specified performance nights and ticketed events throughout the year, some of which require prior reservations. Also, take note that most bar services and parties wrap up around midnight or earlier. From midnight to sunrise, almost all businesses across the island are closed. Bonus tip number two. Unless you plan on traveling in a group, 
The easiest and cheapest way to explore Sikihor is by motorbike. The current daily prices for motorbike rentals range between 250 and 450 pesos, and motorbike rentals at or near the port tend to be more expensive than elsewhere on the island. I have seen prices for goods and services across Sikihor rise in recent months, so it's possible that costs will continue to go up in the near future. If you're staying in San Juan, take some time when you arrive and look around for the best deal. It's likely that your hostel, resort, or guest house may offer their own motorbike rentals. Always politely try to negotiate with the owners, and if you have a long visit in Sikihor, offer to rent a motorbike for a longer period of time at a discounted rate. Bonus tip number three. If you've ever considered getting your scuba diving certification or freediving training, this is the perfect place to do either one or both. Last year, I got my paddy diving certification here, and training in these majestic waters was unreal. Prices at Sikki Horse multiple dive centers are quite affordable compared to the average international rates, especially if you're already a certified diver. So, if you're looking to get started or want to get back into diving, it would be hard to find a better spot in this part of the world to do so. With all that said, I hope you have gained some useful information today that will make any trip to Sikihor exciting, enriching, safe, and memorable. Remember to check out the links below for further information, and take a moment to share your thoughts, travel plans, or Sikihor experiences down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Wherever your future global adventures lead, I wish you and your loved ones many happy trails ahead. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.